many other things, but I want to get to this rancher issue and give you my current take on this. Current meaning the situation could become fluid again. The Washington Compost actually had a pretty decent outline of what has transpired over the years, and I'm going to fill in the gaps as well. But I hope you'll take a moment to listen to this. Because you hear people saying, well, this guy Bundy owns all this land, uh, excuse me, owes all this money, won't get off the land. Okay, I get that, but let's get some facts straight. Number one, it is federal land. That is not in dispute. Number two, there are different kinds of federal land. And 20 or so years ago, the federal government decided that this federal land would be protected federal land. Well, they can't just come out and say it's protected federal land. So what was the basis of them claiming this was protected federal land? The desert tortoise, which you've heard about. They said it's an endangered species. It's threatened. So the government unilaterally claimed, the federal government, is that hundreds of thousands of acres, hundreds of thousands of acres, would be set aside within the federal land area as a conservation area, thereby eliminating, on the spot, ranching, mining, farming, off-road driving, everything. Everything had to go, including livestock grazing, cattle. Clive Bundy's family have been grazing there since 1877. And he said, no. You step in here and you claim that this is conservation area after more than a 100 years because of the desert tortoise? I'll lose everything. Well, Clyde Bundy was the last rancher standing. All the others were shut down. They took some kind of money agreement. All the miners were thrown out. Everything ended except for Clive Bundy and a couple hundred head of cattle. So the Bureau of Land Management, which, by the way, didn't even exist at the time his family began grazing on federal lands, started to fine him, and they fined him over and over and over and over again. And they revoked his grazing permit. And Bundy was very furious about this, and he refused to go in for a new grazing permit, and he refused to pay the fines. So the matter went to federal court. The BLM among others, had their federal lawyers from the U.S. Attorney's Office, from the Interior Department, from the Justice Department, and Bundy represented himself. What had been legal grazing since 1877 was now declared by the BLM as illegal. And as you would anticipate, in 1998, a federal district court and then the Ninth Circuit, based in San Francisco, ruled that Bundy must remove his cattle. Now, let's dial it up without all the other details, uh, some of uh, minor consequence. April 2012, after several thoughts about how to get Bundy off the land and get his cattle, BLM abandons the plan to remove the cattle. Well, in steps the Center for Biological Diversity. This is important. Bookmark that mentally. They threatened to sue the BLM to force the BLM to remove Bundy's cattle. The following month, the BLM then asks the federal court to issue an injunction against Bundy to stop him from grazing. So the BLM was was going to give up two years ago. But a radical left-wing environmental group threatened to take him to court and force their hand, at which point they probably would win since the federal government created all this uh, legal foundation and had court orders now to do it. And they were going to back off, but this leftist environmental group said, no, don't back off. Get rid of the cattle. August 2013, a federal court gives Bundy 45 days to remove his cattle. He won't remove his cattle. Then this April, as you know, BLM claims Bundy owes over a million dollars in fees. Bundy says, no, I don't owe over a million dollars in fees. If anything, I owe $300,000. But you people keep harassing me. And you get these fees to help manage the land, and you're not managing the land. And you know what transpired the last week or so, and BLM pulls back, but says it isn't over. Now I want to step back and talk to you as somebody who was, a, as I pointed out last week, the number two lawyer at the Department of Interior for a brief period under President Ronald Reagan. The tortoise isn't threatened anymore. The tortoise isn't threatened anymore. It's been a huge success. So the underlying basis, or even pretext, if you will, for labeling 
hundreds of thousands of acres of federal land as conservation land ceases to exist. It's federal land. But what kind of federal land is it? Why is it still characterized as conservation land? Now that the basis for calling it conservation land doesn't exist anymore. If it ever did. Since apparently the cattle and the tortoise get along perfectly fine over time. And have. Last time I checked, cattle don't eat tortoises or vice versa. Every other rancher was squeezed out. Every other human activity, for the most part, was squeezed out in these hundreds of thousands of acres, but Bundy won't move. Now let's step back and take a look at this more broadly. There's this push in this country through the Interior Department, the EPA, even through NOAA, variety of other departments and agencies and offices. There's a push in this country to nationalize private property. There's a push in this country to move human beings off of these large swaths of land. Whomever remains, even a Bundy. Ask commercial fishermen what's happening to them. They're being put out of business by the federal government. Ask coal miners what's happening to them. They're being put out of business by the federal government. Ask steel workers what's happening to them. Ask men and women, union, non-union, who wish to build these pipelines from Canada or even across the country. What's happening to them? Ask the farmers in Central Valley, California, what's happening to them? Ladies and gentlemen, this environmental movement is a Marxist movement at the top and within the bureaucracy. They are trying to shut down industries that are crucial to our lifestyle, and they are trying to limit productivity and expansion. And they control the reins of government. This is why so many Americans are sympathetic for Clive Bundy. They see that he's been caught in a bureaucratic and legal quagmire. So to simply say what he's doing is illegal, that's not enough. How did this come to pass? Why, after all this time of grazing on this land, did they stop him? Did they seek to put him out of business and all the rest of them? This isn't simply a matter of following a court order, although I would recommend you do. It's not that. It's bigger than that. This is an assault on our way of life. You may look at Clive Bundy. The vast majority of us have no idea where he even lives, other than watching TV. We've never been there. The vast majority of us, not all of you listening, I get that, but the vast majority of us have never grown anything like farmers. We've never had to raise livestock. We've never had to drive trucks to bring produce or livestock to the grocery store where it's conveniently wrapped and weighed and you take it home and use it and cook it and so forth. There's all kinds of things that go on to putting food on your table. There's all kinds of things that go on when you flick that switch and the light comes on. There's all kinds of things that go on when you say, you know what, I'm not going to eat meat. I only eat fish. Somebody has to catch it and process it and preserve it and transport it and present it. And this entire system is under assault. It's under attack through federal regulations, through federal agencies and federal departments. And they're being pushed and prodded by organizations on the left, by politicians on the left, and by bureaucrats who have weaseled their way into the federal bureaucracy to use regulations to attack these enterprises, to attack these individuals, to attack this way of life. That's why people are furious. Meanwhile, if you want to build a massive solar energy farm, and by the way, that's what's required, a massive amount of land in the middle of the desert where the tortoise is, or if you want to build wind turbines, and you need a hell of a lot of them to make a difference, even mass transit cutting through a desert, you're going to have a hell of a lot easier time. So my question is this to the BLM. Now that we know the desert tortoise is no longer in danger, why don't you stop treating this land as conservation land and let the ranchers back on, and their cattle, and everybody else, because the original basis for the classification doesn't even exist anymore. But they won't do it. No. They will be told, the rule of law, baby! I'm not against the rule of law, but I'm also not in favor of the abuse of power. I fear for the future. 
for our next generation. I really do. That's why Americans are drawn to what took place with Clive Bundy. That's why Americans are drawn to what goes on when the IRS is out of control. That's why many of us are concerned about an imperial president and a rogue Senate majority leader. These people have no respect for us, no respect for our rights, no respect for our property. And they will not leave us alone. They will not leave us alone. They are constantly tormenting us on our own property, with our own money. Harry Reid exits a TV studio with his sunglasses on. He's asked about this situation in Nevada by somebody named Samantha Boatman. Here's how it goes. Cut one, go. Is there anything you would like to say about what's going on down south with Clive Bundy and the BLM? Well, it's not over. Uh, We can't have an American people that violate the law and just walk away from it. So it's not over. Oh, yes, we can. They're called illegal aliens, and they're not even an American people, Mr. Illiterate. We have foreigners coming into this country violating the law left and right. And you don't give a crap even worse than that, pal. You want to legalize their lawlessness, don't you? You creep. And that's exactly what he is. And then one of his, uh, one of his children, Rory Reed, chip off the old knucklehead, a Clark County, oh, excuse me, about, uh, what took place uh, with Clive Bundy, and he's a Clark County commissioner. He's the son of Harry Reid. And he was on this same TV station. Hat tip, real clear politics, cut two, go. Let's start with Clive and Bundy himself. Okay. He is not a victim, and he's not a hero. The facts aren't in dispute. He's been using land that he doesn't own for over 20 years. Stop. The issue wasn't whether he was using land that he doesn't own. The issue is whether or not he was illegally using land that was conservation land. You twit. Another reed twit. Another jerk. Go ahead. He didn't pay. He broke the law. We believe in a country that in which we're subject to laws, and we can't just ignore the laws. No, we don't. We don't believe in a country that's subject to laws, like the millions your father took in. No, we don't believe in a country that's subject to laws, like Obama, the imperial president. You liberal Democrats, you don't believe in laws unless you can use those laws to your advantage. Who are you fooling there, pal? Nobody. Go ahead. Mike, and I think that clearly... Ah, shut up. You know what? One reads enough. Got to listen to his uh, offspring here. I can't take it. As a matter of fact, I'm cutting him off to talk about something that matters. Legal Zoom. So why is this land in Nevada the ranchers have used for... uh couple of generations, why is it still conservation land? Since the desert tortoise is just fine. Why don't they repeal the designation so Mr. Bundy and other ranchers can use the federal land as they have, well, for what? Since the 1800s. See, that'll never happen because the environmental radical leftists, that is the Marxists, will object to it. Once government's in control, government's always in control. So the pretext is gone And let me also say this, if you're a citizen and you're sitting back and you're seeing what's happening to your land, you have a puddle on your land, you know, this isn't just some guy in the middle of nowhere, ladies and gentlemen. This is now affecting suburbs and outer burbs. You have a puddle on your land and now that's navigable waters? Really? Under the Clean Water Act? Seriously? Oh, yes. With no right of judicial review. That was the EPA's response until the Supreme Court said, no, you can't do that. There's all kinds of abuses of the citizen, of property rights, of lifestyles that are going on in this country. All kinds. By this ubiquitous federal leviathan. And how is it that all these issues, all these obstacles, just melt away when you advance a liberal agenda, a pro-green, pro-red agenda? We need these massive wind turbines. Well, there goes the... uh, The bald eagle family, oh, well, who cares? We need miles and miles of desert in Nevada for solar panels. What did the tortoise then? Well, then screw the tortoise, right? Because human beings, in the calculation of the of the green movement, a.k.a. the old red movement, are of little consequence. The rule of law, and that's quite hilarious coming from this president and his administration and the likes of Harry Reid. The rule of law, really? Really? You mean the Constitution, Mr. President? Is that what you're talking about? This president 
is still violating the Constitution and still intends to, with the support of his party, with the support of Harry Reid and the rest of them. Now, as I said, those of you who think this is just some crazy guy out in the middle of nowhere, how does this affect you? Let me tell you how it affects you. Today, homeowners and farmers and businesses are subjected to a host of government restrictions and prohibitions that reduce the use and value of their properties, including laws relating to wetlands and endangered species. You ready for this? In 2002, the Heritage Foundation's Dr. Ron Utt examined the federal government's land use surveys. He didn't create them. He examined the government's land use surveys. You know what he concluded? After nearly 400 years of unmanaged development and rabbit-like population growth, somewhere between 3.4% and 5.2% of land in the continental United States has been consumed. All right, that doesn't even include Alaska or Hawaii, but Alaska, which is a big place. Let me repeat that. 3.4 to 5.2% of land in the continental United States has been consumed. I read that study when I was writing Liberty and Tyranny. It's fascinating how he breaks down each state in these federal surveys. So what does that mean? What that means is about 95% of the continental United States, including all that land, excluding all that land in Alaska and Hawaii, but particularly Alaska, given its size, is not developed. But you wouldn't know that, would you, if I didn't tell you? Because the brainwashing is sprawl, development, man out of control. But what of the heavily urbanized states, which include several of the original colonies? Well, Dr. Utt looked at them too. Let's look at New York and Virginia. They were settled in the early 1600s. Nearly 90% of the land in New York and Virginia still undeveloped. In Pennsylvania, over 85% of the land Undeveloped. In Maryland, over 80% of the land undeveloped. Now, New Jersey and Rhode Island, their developed shares hovered at around one-third of the available land. But those are some of the highest shares of the nation, but still leaving both states with about two-thirds of their land undeveloped or in agricultural use. Did you know that? No. Because the vast majority of us, not all of us, live in urban areas or suburban areas or outer burbs. Have you ever flown a plane from the East Coast to the West Coast or vice versa? Well, those of you who have, and you look out the window, you know exactly what the point is, don't you? But it's not good enough, you see. It's not good enough for the extremists. It's not just about land use. It's about human use. It's not just about controlling development. It's about controlling you. They chased out every single rancher off those hundreds of thousands of conservation land based on the tortoise, which is no longer threatened, except one. They tried to bankrupt him. They tried to run up his legal bills. They've run up his fines. They've calculated his grazing fees. They've taken, uh, they've got one court order after another. And so when people simply say, well, it's the law, he needs to abide by the law. Well, yes, he needs to abide by the law, and the federal government needs to abide by its limitations. Now, here's the biggest question. Why the hell does the federal government control 87% of the state of Nevada? Why the hell does the federal government control 25 to 30% of the continental United States? I'm not even including Alaska or Hawaii. Why? Why should that be? Well, Mark, conservation, they have no idea what's going on on most of these uh, properties. When I was Deputy Solicitor of Interior for a short period under President Reagan, the general rule was don't harass these people. They're trying to eke out a living. They've been there forever. Don't crush them. Treat them as neighbors. Treat them with respect. Don't look for excuses to put them out of business. This is the tip of the iceberg, ladies and gentlemen. You know what happens to private property owners who happen to have inherited property that are in the middle of uh, park areas? that are surrounded by parkland? You know how many of those people have their property condemned? Trust me, we don't know the vast majority of what's going on. And people, you know, they go into the Fox News studio, good people. Or they go into the MSNBC studio, or they go into the CNN studio, and they sit there and they start commenting on 
or any of the nightly news, what's going on in a place of the world they've never been to.